he has these points what what marriage is and why it exists and so he says that marriage as a firm one way of looking at marriage is as a ra rather odd sort of package deal an exchange in which the two parties agree to share income housing sexual favors and a collection of productive activities such as cooking meals cleaning house washing dishes and rearing children seen from this standpoint the motivation for marriage is in part the existence of economics i sorry economies of scale in production it is easier to cook one meal for two people than two meals each for one person and in part the advantage of division of labor a major a oh, sorry a marriage is simply a particular kind of two person firm so obviously he's very he's being very like um methodical in his definition but i think it's something that is actually um missing in many people's perspective of marriage right there's almost like too much of the feels and and not enough of the the practical side of our or as um or as our brother uh rayford johnson would say um the likies <laughs> Could use the term, um, but he goes on to say, but a firm is not the only way of taking advantage of the division of labor. There is the alternative of the market. Most of us take advantage of the comparative advantage of the butcher, the baker, the brewer, but we do not, we do not have to marry them to get our dinner. The wife in a traditional marriage may have a comparative advantage over the husband in cooking. And the husband might have a comparative advantage over the wife in carpentry. But outside of the household, there are surely better cooks and better carpenters than either of them. Why does the couple limit itself to division of labor without the household? Within. Within the household, sorry. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> I mean, I think if you had enough money, you would pay someone for all of these things. Just look at you know, any of our celebrities, how many of them have live in nannies or, you know, groundskeepers. And, and so to some extent, uh, it's a matter of limited resources, right? Um, we tend to, I, you know, I'd rather pay a plumber and do the carpentry myself, <laughs> but I can't, I yes, can't afford I, both. You know, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? I also love the point that he made here. That was helpful mm -hmm. for me when he said that it's easier to cook one meal for two people than two meals each for one person. Right. So when you get together, you're like, Oh wow. Like, yeah, it's, it, that's a little thing. It's a minor little simple thing, but you're like, actually, yeah, we only, you know, you only, you know, making, you're making dinner for the one person or whatever for two people, but it's the one time and, and, and it carries through or whatever the case may be. But Joel, let me ask you, uh, what advice would you give to someone who wants to start a marriage firm? Um, or, or, you know, wants to start a marriage and looking at it like a firm. So, but, but sorry, Joel, like, because I, I, you know, can you, can you define what a firm is? Cause this is the first, I remember when hearing it in class for the first time and I was just like, what the heck's a firm? And the teacher taught, taught the whole class and I had no idea what he was talking about. <laughs> I mean, and, and like I like I thought a lawyer firm. Like I like I was just like, why does he keep using the word firm? So yeah, how I mean, would you define I, I firm? I think as much as a lawyer firm is you know maybe peculiar because we think of like these, you know, firm is probably used more of like professional organizations, um, accounting firm, lawyers firm, right? Like it, I think it's just a you know uh, almost like a colloquial term of the of or colloquial use of the term, but I mean you could almost replace. If you went, if you start looking at, um, you know, from a legal perspective, the idea of a partnership, well, what's the difference between a partnership and a firm? Well, nothing really. Um, and, and the, you know, from a part and without getting too technical, but from a partnership perspective, you know, the government or the, you know, the, when it comes to taxation and, and things like that, even, uh, legally, you don't have to have a contract. A, a literal a written contract to be considered a partnership the concept that underlies all of it from a partnership perspective is sort of a joint venture towards profit 
right? So you could have a verbal agreement. You could have a nonverbal understanding in terms of a partnership, right? If you're both pursuing profit, meaning you're both risking for the reward, from a legal perspective, not one of you can run away and be like, no, no, I earned all this money, right? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so you're saying... Sorry, go ahead. So you're... Uh no, so you're saying like so so marriage is somewhat like of a of a business transaction. Well, just the partnership concept, right? So if you think of a firm more so just people working collectively. The reason why a lawyer or or accounting firm works is because you have multiple owners. And so it's that's why firm sort of works with a marriage because you don't have it's not like a you know corporation where you've got or or even a, a, a small business where you normally have one owner and a bunch of employees so the idea of firm as opposed to company and that's why i use the term partnership because really it's it's a joint pursuit okay so what advice would you give somebody who wants to start a marriage so one um, I think a marriage firm, yeah, you know, having, uh, you know, looking at your marriage, like it's a joint life venture, I think is actually really valuable now. So I don't, I don't suggest getting down on one knee and, you know, asking someone to join you in your marriage firm. It's probably not going to go over well, unless you've had some conversations along this line before and you're sort of making a joke, but, but I think you know, go back to what I said about before, how many people enter into marriage based on the feels, right? They're, they're sort of caught up in emotions and they haven't really thought about, okay, I'm, I want to enter in a life journey with somebody, right? I, I, as opposed to, well, this relationship feels good right now. Um, and so I think there's a number of things that, that you could sort of ask the questions uh, about yourself to say, you know, what type of person do I want to marry? Or what is the kind of person that will help me achieve the family goals that I have? And I, and I say family, not, you know, whether that's kids or not is, is not my point. I'm just saying, like, as a collective, whether it's two of you or ten of you, you know, what, what are you, what do you want to achieve with somebody else and finding somebody else that has a similar trajectory and that now the two of you can navigate together as opposed to being pulled in opposite directions. You know, the example that comes to my mind is like, if one of you wants to be a missionary and the, or, or, you know, travel the world or do something that hinders the ability to have a family, you, you obviously need to be pursuing a marriage with somebody who has similar life goals or, or life trajectory what about you what darnell what what is this marriage as a firm how does that change maybe the way you'd give someone advice about looking towards marriage yeah um kind of like that old saying uh love doesn't pay the bills and as we get older we realize like there's a lot more that goes into making a relationship go the long haul than just uh love and emotions and so like you know, I have young people in my life, uh, young men, young women that I've seen grow up and then they've gotten married and, and we talk a lot about relationships. And so my advice to like the ladies, I would say is uh, drop that chic and get with the geek. <laughs> All right. So you just like, you know, you, you got to know your market value, right? If we're going to use economic terms. So like, you have all the power um, until you say I do. And so that's what I would say as, as a woman, woman, as a woman, women have all the leverage um, in the in the relationship. And so I have this saying um, and it goes like this. Never underestimate the power of the vagina. Right. Never underestimate the power of the vagina. <laughs> and what that means, and Joel's like, unpack that. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> unpack that? <laughs> so the, the the point is this: that um, you know, the woman, a woman's vagina, is what the guy wants, and he will do anything to get it. So if he's going to do anything to get it, you should use that as leverage 
and that you should be making all the demands and having all of your demands met before you sleep with anybody, right? You, you set the terms in the start. Close your legs, close the deal, right? And if, he, and if he leaves, then he really wasn't for you. But as a woman, know that you have all the leverage and, and men will do the most just to get to that point or even, even to the point of marriage. So you kind of have to measure him. Um, but as soon as you give in, you lose all your leverage. Um, for the fellas, I would say, um, you know, um, like a wise man once said, Who is that never trust man? a big button to smile. Right? <laughs> I think I think it was um um it was BBD Bell Biv Devo. Um yeah, yeah, never yeah, yeah, never trust a big button to smile. She might not be poison, but um she might not be helpful. And so like intelligence is key. Um intelligent women, guys, seek intelligent women. Um now, if you're a dummy and you wouldn't know an intelligent woman if she corrected your homework, um then you should be asking for help. Uh, preferably a, a woman of Titus II status. I hope you guys are taking notes, man. I'm, I'm teaching a class right now, man. I'm about to write a book. So look, if if you don't, <laughs> if you don't, um, if you if, as a guy and you're only stuck on TNA and you can't identify an intelligent woman, then you should be asking an older woman, a Titus II woman, um, who can help help point you in the right direction and 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 and, and help you see what a good woman um, would be for you and so the idea is this men know men women know women so as a young lady if you want to know if a guy's legit ask an older guy ask an older guy that you trust to come in come in and be like okay but let me just see this guy okay no he's an idiot and as an older and as a guy like you don't ask an older you don't ask a, your guys about a girl men don't know women you got to go ask a woman about a woman Right. Um, and the last thing I would say is just marry early, uh, build wealth together, not apart. Um, like that whole division of labor. Um, I thought that was an excellent point um, that that Dave Freeman um, makes that you don't build. And everybody, you know, so many young people are, are running around saying, oh, yeah, I'm going to get my stuff together. Then I'm going to get married. I'm like, but you're going to be broke. And even then, there is no incentive for you to 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 build that wealth. But once you become to become one, that you, then you can create that division of labor, and then you can start pooling your resources and creating wealth faster. I always say this: that your life doesn't begin until you get married. That well, that that's just my personal experience. My life didn't begin till I got married, meaning that I didn't start doing actual adult things and thinking like an adult until I had um, the pressure of having somebody with yeah, me to, you know, I think um, the, the division of labor, of. <clears throat> I think there's, it's easy potentially for people to, um, misunderstand or, or misinterpret what that's really getting at. So like the, the, you know, you made the example about cooking, right? Like, Oh, two meals, but apply the same thing to rent, right? So two incomes playing one rent, even like, even if you have, like, yes. Yes. Oh, I only rent yes, a room. Joe. Okay. Are you paying, you know, 700 bucks a month? Well, yes. maybe you could. And again, maybe the numbers don't apply to where you live in Mr. Toronto, whatever the point's still valid. So yeah, one person pays 700 a month of rent, but two people pay a thousand, right? Um, you have two internet bills, one internet bill, right? So all of the thing, you know, there's that side. And, and then you could get a deal and you, you could get like a phone deal. Right? Or like there's, yeah. There's, there's all these <laughs> aspects of you can live more efficiently in community um, and, and relationship. And, and I think that we haven't even gotten to sort of the value of marriage and, and, you know, we can get there in a second um, because like, you know, someone could take what I said and well, like I just live with my girlfriend. Okay. Different conversation. Right. But we'll, we'll sort of touch on that in a second. But um, the other side of it goes back to what I was saying about thinking about who you're going to marry and division of labor. I think you also need to understand what are your skills and, and what are the skills of the person you, you want the skills of the other person generally to complement what you have, meaning where you're weak, they're strong, where they're weak, you're strong because the whole idea of division of labor is you do you specialize in different things. There's no point in being mediocre at 
everything so that, okay, everybody's responsible for shoveling the driveway. Everybody's responsible for taking out the garbage. Everybody's responsible for cleaning up the house. Like you become more efficient as some of you specialize and some of, in, in some things and others specialize in others. That's the principle of division of labor. So I think it plays into choosing a mate um, where you recognize what are the skills I have and how does that fit with what I'm hoping for. Please subscribe and hit the bell to stay up to date. If you liked or disliked the snippet, give it a like and share your two cents with us in the comment section. And remember, six cents makes change.